Hey, tubers of the U. All right, we're going to be looking at our 101% uh, efficient circuit. Uh, so this is similar to the last video, but it's kind of a rehash of that. But um, I managed to uh, get a bigger range. Uh, now we've gotten off of the micro watt and micro amp range and moved up to the milliamp and milliwatt range. Okay, so. Uh, I've simplified it down a little bit um, so now the load resistance has been lowered from uh, 100 let's see what was it one 100,000 ohms to 10,000 ohms of resistance okay for our load and it's still in parallel with our capacitor here and if you look we have 200 or 12.20 volts across our load right here uh, made evident by this capacitor right here while we have 12.08 volts on the uh, input and this time we're using a battery we're pulsing the power out of a battery so we've kind of swapped our power supplies around so this power supply is now powering our 555 timer uh, but we're not going to be looking at that power because it doesn't matter that's just the switching power we are only concerned with the power coming out of the battery and then through our uh, switch here and into our parallel uh, circuit here which is uh, composed of just a resistor which is our load and parallel with our capacitor and then in series with that is our coil uh, so okay now now that we are in a higher scale range here okay um, we don't have to worry about current leakage anymore because it's just too small so this capacitor is basically blocking all current and the only current really that's we can see on a bigger scale which is that 1.23 milliamps of current is uh, running through our resistor not so much or hardly at all right there in the capacitor um, the voltage is still higher than our input right there okay so um now uh, also on when we're looking at this on a smaller range when you're in the micro range you're running into all sorts of stuff to account for like uh, uh, like I said earlier uh, current leakage from the capacitor uh, the meters suck up about a, a microamp or so of current just to take a, a, a voltage measurement. And so there's a lot of little things that, that, that just confuse uh, if you're looking at it on too small of a scale. Plus also uh, possible MOSFET leakage, which there is. But we're going to test that here in a minute to show that the wattage across our load has nothing to do with that at all. And it's much too small. Uh, compared to the uh, amount of uh, well the difference between the watts uh, consumed on the input and the watts consumed on the output uh, so there's only one meter measuring current okay on the input and the output there's no sense on having two meters uh, reading input and output current because it's the same current it's following the same path starting from our negative here of our power source and we follow that black wire around and it goes through our switch and then into the uh, our meter on the negative side which is that black uh, probe and then it comes out our red probe right here and then this there's two yellow wires but it's the same connection it's the, basically connecting the resistor in parallel with the capacitor and then of course we're reading the voltage across both of those at the same time and then that following that green wire in series is a coil and then that goes back to the positive over there so we only need one meter because uh, it's the exact same current going into our load and besides if you have two meters uh, one of them may not be ca calibrated perfectly. They're, they might be off by a microamp or two. So we eliminate that problem by using just one meter. 
and uh, this is a very conventional way of measuring. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Uh, so let's let's calculate what our efficiency is um, right quick. So we know we have 12.08 volts on the input. So we go 12.08 times. I got 1.23 milliamps now. So point zero zero one two three, and we have here about what is that? Like 1.4 rounded up, but 1.5 milliwatts. So let's commit that to memory, and let's go calculate the output right quick. So the output is 12.20 volts. Okay, and the, the input, the output current is the same as the input current, so we'll multiply that by 0.00123. And you see we have 1.5 milliwatts. Now, let's divide that by our input watts. And as you can see, it's a COP, or coefficients of performance of uh, 1.009. And we can round that up to 100 and 1.01, but we can also multiply that by 100%, and you can see this is 101% efficiency. Okay, or it's a cop really. But um, so now, if we take our same output here, and we look at the difference between our input. We have a uh, 1.4 microwatts. Okay, now I want to point out there's three zeros there. So remember that there's three zeros, and that's 1.4 microwatts of uh, energy gain in the system. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to check for uh, MOSFET leakage. That means we're going to have to switch off to uh, the milliamp range or the microamp range I'm sorry and so let's uh, let's do that right now and the way we're going to do that is we're just going to form a loop with no power supply in it by looping it right here okay we'll just stick that on make sure we don't blow our meter hopefully I did not blow this I don't think I did Let's see. Let's just make sure. I don't think I did. I did that before and had to replace the fuse in it, but about that looks about right. So there's about 175 millivolts across our load right now. Uh, there's literally zero current. Okay, so that right there is showing like basically no wattage. But if we want to take a closer look at it, I'll switch this over to micro amp range okay and that's going to go up and to show that this correlates with Ohm's law let's take our 0.174 milli uh, volts and divide that by our 10,000 ohms of resistance and we have this, uh, what is it, like 17.4 micro. Actually, I don't know what, it, but you see, look at the, uh, let's see, what would that be? Like one point, 17 milliamps. But it correlates very closely to what we are going to be seeing here right now. It's I believe it's just charging the capacitor or something and settling but it'll reach 17 microamps which is exactly what this is showing right here and if we multiply that to find the wattage by our point we used 174 millivolts that's the wattage of the current leakage of our MOSFET switch right there and you see there's three, four, 
five zeros. So this is much, much too small compared to uh, when we have the power supply included. So let's put the power supply back on. Switch this back so we don't blow our meter. Okay, and we'll switch this back, put the power supply back in. And that's just charging the capacitor back up. And I'll go back down to the same 1.23 eventually. Uh, let's put our voltmeter back on. Uh, let me set this down right fast. Get that connected back on there. Okay, so, so that's, that's everything right there. And we got our same 12 point. So it looks like it's still trying to charge the capacitor up a little bit. But you see the wattage across our load is much more than the current, uh, the, uh, well, the capacitor current leakage as well as the MOSFET leakage and any current taken from the meters to take a volt reading. All right, so about 1.24 milliamps. And uh, that's at 12.19 now, but that's because our power supply drained down a little, probably 12.08, but it's still 101% efficient. So the wattage is not coming from uh, any current taken out of the system from taking from the meters um, measuring voltage or even the meters reading current because the meters require a tiny little bit of power to take their measurements with and then of course current leakage but see you don't see any of that when you're looking at it on a, a little bit of a bigger scale. So now we got we're got a milliwatt range going on here, and this is the milliamps. So this is 1.23 milliamps. Uh, this is the current for the input and the output. So, uh, as usual, if you have any comments on what you suspect this energy is. Um, please leave those down in the comment box and uh, as usual please like and share uh, this video and if you're new to the channel please subscribe and um, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video mm.